This is the first in a new series of videos documenting building a force. I'm calling them Force Diaries. I plan to get into Battlefront's NAM game, so I need to build a new force. I bought a bunch of stuff in the clearance sale before the updated rules were released. These included a blister of Australian infantry and a pair of Centurion tanks. I've actually used the infantry in action. I fielded them as Team Yankee Free Nations Australians alongside a blister of actual Team Yankee Aussie infantry. The sculpts are close enough that they look fine on the table, and base markings told me which NAM teams were just infantry and which were Proxy and Carl Gustav teams. Here they are painted in jungle green fatigues. This works for both NAM and Team Yankee. OzCam wasn't introduced until after the Team Yankee timeline, but I do have another blister of Team Yankee Australians I plan to paint in camo uniforms. These NAM figures are SLR M60 machine gun teams. They also include a medic and flamethrowers for you to field a pioneer platoon if you want to. I've put the extra figures on small bases for the moment, but now I have the new book I know that's not right. But that's something for future me to fix further down the track. I recently did a video about building my Centurions. They're resin and metal kits, although there are rumours at the moment that Centurion and M48 might be released in plastic. That would be nice. Anyway. These are my built and undercoated Centurions for NAM. You can build a Centurion Armoured Squadron, but I don't have the sort of money to buy this many resin and metal tank kits. Instead, you can actually attach a Centurion to each infantry platoon. This is a more likely role for my tanks. I added to my forces recently by ordering a NAM mortar platoon blister. This gives you 681mm mortar tubes with Australian crews. Here are a couple of the mortar teams. They're assembled and base coated. These are nice sculpts and they paint up okay. Unlike their entry in the NAM book, a two tube firebase is actually three points, and a six tube is nine. No options for a four tube, oddly. If I had to guess, I'd say six points. I have plenty of M113s from my Team Yankee force. These are painted lustreless olive green, Australian ground vehicle base colour since 1967. I have a mix of M74 and T50 turrets, as well as some with just gun shields. Team Yankee combat APCs should all be T50 turrets, with open 50 cals or gun shields for M125 mortars or other support tracks. In Vietnam, open guns and gun shields were used initially. Combat experience suggested additional protection was required for the commander's station. APCs were initially supplemented with some M74 turrets. A standard mix was the Troop HQ in each section lead track had a 50 cal with a gun shield. Then the Alpha and Bravo call signs would have turrets with either a 50 or 30 cal gun, or a pair of 30 cals. T50 turrets were added to the mix later in the war. I bought a couple of the turret packs with a mix of M74 and T50 turrets. These will have to do for Team Yankee as well. Fire support is added with a pair of fire support vehicles. These were M113 APCs mounting a Saladin turret with a 76mm gun. These replaced three M108 SP artillery pieces leased from the US and gave Australian troops some nice firepower. The FSVs have anti-tank 14 as well as Beehive for infantry work. The FSV kits are resin and metal upgrade kits for a plastic M113. There is some issue with parts fit and warpage due to issues with using resin this way but with care and patience they can eventually be built into OK table models. Speaking of fire support, I bought a plastic 105mm field artillery battery box from Flames of War to give my force some heavy firepower. There isn't a dedicated Australian NAM kit for this, but I mixed a couple of figures from the mortar teams onto the bases to give them an Anzac flavour. These were nice kits and were dead easy to build. I could have ordered the US NAM version of this, but the Flames of War box was in stock at my local hobby store. It was right there, so I bought it. These are assembled, but they haven't been washed or base coated yet. So that's what I have so far. Up to two platoons of infantry if I sneak in my Team Yankee infantry bases as well. I have turreted APCs for a cavalry troop, and enough Centurions to have one attached per infantry platoon. I can support them with mortars and artillery, and even a couple of fire support vehicles. The local Op 4 are threatening lots of tanks, looking at the ironclad boxes. I might look at adding some anti-tank infantry with 90mm recoilless rifles. The artillery could do with a spotter like an OH-6 Loach helicopter. 
A 161st reconnaissance flight from the Australian Army Light Aviation Squadron actually operated Cessna Fixed Wing and Bell 47 Sioux helicopters in the observation and spotting role. The Bell 47s were called possums in Australian service. I guess because they used to be down in the trees? I don't know. Anyway, that's where I'm up to. This force is shaping up okay and some of it's assembled and even painted. I'll make another diary entry if there's any progress to report. <laughs>